When we think of the healthcare infrastructure and we sort of uh, address it within a paradigm of limited resources, we have to try and triage specific illnesses, ones that sort of come up on a day-to-day -day basis, where if we don't address them immediately, then people die. What's going on guys? Today is March 30th and it is the second iteration of Thursday Thoughts, where I just sort of get to sit down, touch base with you and talk to you about really everything that happened throughout the week. But really first and foremost, I got to visit my medical school, which was super exciting. I got to meet a bunch of the other medical students. I got to meet current students. I got tours of the facilities. I was going to make a more dedicated vlog, but my stay was so short and it was sort of abbreviated because I had to travel all the way back home two and a half hours to go back to work that same night. But I will show some B-roll of like a little bit of that day and a little bit of like the osteopathic manipulative medicine room, which was super cool. And yeah, just an awesome feeling. I love the campus. I love the rural atmosphere. It was a great community feeling. And that's just something I really cherished and something I'm really looking forward to. And it was nice to see that that was, uh, that was there, that that was like a part of the, the campus life. So yeah, great, great time, great school. What else is going on? So one of you, my subscribers reached out to me on Instagram and asked me a really interesting question about how doctors are addressing the obesity epidemic here in the United States. And as a recently accepted medical student, eventually going to be you know, face to face with these issues, they wanted to know my opinion. And essentially the question was, this. Sounds like doctors receive less than a day of education in obesity, yet it is one of the top three highest growing preventative causes of death in the US. I don't know that doctors receive less than a day of education on obesity. That sounds a little dubious, but why is it that less than 1% of doctors in the US specialize in obesity medicine? What are your thoughts on treating this as a disease when many doctors, not all, are not equipped to handle conversations about weight without bias or judgment? So let me go sort of step by step and answer this compartmentally. So the preamble to the question was essentially that uh, there was this supposition that doctors receive less than a day of education on obesity. I don't think that's actually true. To be fair, I've never really been in the medical school curriculum, so I'm not like one to say that this is definitively what they teach in medical school, but I find it hard to believe that obesity being one of the largest growing comorbidities, especially here in the US, I find it hard to believe that medical educations have not sort of uh, try to illuminate this issue, try to address it, and have really thought about the implications of the obesity epidemic. Again, I don't know what they teach in medical school yet, but I I'm calling calling cap on this on this part of the, uh, the, the preamble to the question. And the question is really this, why is it that less than 1% of doctors in the US specialize in obesity medicine? First of all, I think that it's probably due to the fact that other specialties in America are in higher demand in terms of their immediate necessity. For instance, like emergency medicine specialists, family medicine doctors, critical care specialists. When we think of the healthcare infrastructure as a whole, and we sort of uh, address it within a paradigm of limited resources. It's sort of difficult because we have to try and triage specific illnesses, ones that sort of come up on a day-to-day -day basis, where if we don't address them immediately, then people die. And so seeing healthcare as being a sort of business with limited resources in terms of doctors and healthcare specialists, we need to properly triage and allocate those resources accordingly. And I think that obesity medicine, I don't really know what that means in terms of like specialty, probably dealing with people who do suffer from obesity, trying to get them back on track with specific diets and maybe, you know, addressing some underlying uh, issues with their metabolism. I imagine that's what obesity specialists really do. And so I just see that there's more of an immediate need to face more pressing medical issues. And that's where uh, the majority of the resources go, which is why you get this sort of deflated percentage in terms of like people quote unquote, dedicating their life to fighting obesity. I also think that obesity medicine is like a super subspecialized specialty and therefore should be compared with other subspecialties so that we don't really have this diminutive uh, percentage statistic that we just look at and we say, oh, less than 1% of people. Well, no, that's probably 1% of the entire healthcare industry. But when you look at it in terms of like and comparing it to other subspecialties, it's probably a much greater percentage. So yeah, those are sort of like my immediate thoughts. Um, I think that it's a really important thing, but I think that obesity is something that can be prevented with proper education and guidance with one-on-one -on -one counseling with family medicine specialists. So I think that if anything places 
uh, more of a burden upon family medicine specialists to try and implement that into their care. So yeah, those are sort of my immediate thoughts on that. So that was a really interesting conversation that I had that I thought I would uh, share with you because I thought it was relevant to medicine, it was relevant to my life, and it was relevant to this channel. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are about this in the comments because I'm sort of interested to know what you think. Next but not least, this is something that just like popped into my head and really made me angry. Lately, YouTube has been flooding me with like a bunch of these like motivational speeches from these satellite YouTube channels that have nothing to do with the actual content in which they're posting. Meaning that these are these just like accounts like Motivation Monday or like Sigma male pro tips or something stupid like that. And they just like stitch together a bunch of other content that other content creators have made and like put some, you know, really motivational music behind it. And they get like thousands and thousands of views. I think that is like ruining YouTube. It's annoying because it's, you know, rewarded in terms of monetization anyways. These are like big names like Jordan Peterson, Jocko Willenick, Joe Rogan, all of these people, they're just like stitching together these motivational speeches, putting some uh, music behind it and then posting a video and they get like, 2 million views and it's just like stop it that's so annoying it's so stupid and every time i see one of these things i point it out and i don't know if any other people notice it but i just wish it would stop i wish people would just take the time to try and create their own content even if it is an adaptation of what somebody else has done anyway kind of an annoyance which leads into my other annoying battle which is really primarily with youtube i spend a lot of time editing these videos and filming this video. Like, I just got off a 12 hour shift of serving. I'm exhausted, but I made a promise to myself that I would film these the night before Thursday, would stitch them together and I would post it because I'm really dedicated to all of you, the people that watch my videos and the people that subscribe. But I feel like I'm just drowning and I've been trying to get better at this stuff. I've been trying to make relevant content, content that's engaging, content that I have made that's original. I've been trying to get better at marketing in terms of my titles and my thumbnails. And you probably have noticed that, but for some reason, this uphill battle with like the YouTube algorithm in terms of like uh, viewership is just not going the way I want it to. And so I spend literally hours, like 10, 15, sometimes 20 hours on a single video, upload it and like, I, it does not do very well. <laughs> and then you like go online and you'll see all of these YouTubers and they'll make other videos that are like sort of germane to the topics in which you are touching on and they get like blown up. And it's just like, you have to wonder, what are you doing wrong? And that is sort of a constant battle that I am facing currently. And it's making me feel like the channel is undergoing some sort of identity crisis because it's sort of, not forgotten why I'm doing this, because the reason why is to really help people. I just don't really know what I'm helping people with. In terms of like branding and like what this channel is really about, I think that is probably why I'm struggling so much is because my channel is like undergoing this identity crisis. It's trying to find a niche, or maybe I'm trying to create one where I am sort of at the intersection of like a med student as well as like somebody that lives in their van yeah, I just don't know how I fit into that picture. And I don't know that people find my content as engaging as I want them to, which obviously they don't, because if they did, the YouTube algorithm would put me in a place that would allow me to get more views, but it just doesn't happen. I don't know if that even makes any sense, but that is really what's been on my mind, which is the point of these segments. Let me know what you think about all of that. Um, let me know what you really want to see from this channel. Maybe like reach out to me. I would like to make like more one-on-one -on -one connections with my subscribers so that I can really like know what it is you want from this channel because I wanna give that to you. I wanna give you what you feel is helpful. And that obviously starts by creating a more intimate connection with you. And I know some of you on a regular basis come and they comment and I know that we have interactions. Anyways, uh, this video is probably already very long. God, it's 20 minutes almost. 11 o'clock right now before Thursday. I gotta quickly edit this together before I upload it for the morning. So uh, again, please reach out to me in the comments below. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Expect to see more regular content. I think I'm gonna be doing like a Thursday, Monday uh, alternating schedule in terms of posting. Uh, so Monday at two o'clock is what I'm going to be aiming for in terms of consistency. Okay, as you can tell, I'm probably super loopy and tired. Let me cut this video off. I got to edit it. Anyways, love you guys.
Thank you so much. Um, I'll talk to you later. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.